Chapter One. 道，可道，非常道。The Tao, if we can know the way of it, is not the actual Tao. 明，可明，非常明。Its name, if we can name it, is not its actual name. 无名，天地之始。有名万物之母 ，the unnamable, the unnameable, that which we can't name, is from which heaven and earth originated. The nameable is the mother of the ten thousand things. 故常无欲，以观其妙。Thus, it is with non-desire we observe its wondrousness. 常有欲。It is with desire we observe its facets or edges or boundaries. 测量者同出而异名，同为之学。These two things, they spring from the same source, despite having different names. Both equally profound. 玄之又玄，重妙。Deeply profound and unfathomable, it is the doorway to a great many wonders. What a nice way to start a book. How could I finish on that? I mean, chapter one, almost everybody's got to know the first few lines. I mean, it's it's just it's it's common. And so I could say, of、oh, the Tao, if you can name the Tao, it's not the Tao. We all go, yeah, of course we know that. But what's important to understand is that. If we look at the characters, what I want to talk about is if you know contemporary Mandarin or you're scanning over with a OCR text or whatever you're doing to get your characters,、uh, Fei Chang comes up as very, and then you might say, look a little further, okay, not ordinary. But that Fei means no or not in Chinese, particularly in classical Chinese. It is a very negative, as in a non-word, not. No, and the cha means common, but in classical Chinese it means constant, never changing, omnipresent. It's the cha, referring to the wu cha, the wu cha, the five constants. You'll hear about it,、uh, you know, in the classics. They're talking about the idea of ren, benevolence. E, righteousness. The courteousness. J,、uh, uprightness. Will, and、uh, wisdom, and xin, to be trustworthy, to be worth your word. And these were considered the five constants. Ci wu chang, bu long wen. You know, you can't mess these up. You've got to be. You've got to have benevolence, righteousness.、Uh, you've got to have courteousness, politeness. You've got to have wisdom, and you've got to have trustworthiness, and these were the constants that we're supposed to have, and so that idea of constant, the constant Tao, and so the moment we give it a name and we say, okay, we know it's not the Tao, but we're going to call it the Tao, we're talking about a specific aspect of it, and therefore it's not the constant Tao, because the constantness is what makes the Tao so incredible. It's constantly the Tao. Ming ke ming fei chang ming. The name, if we could give it, is not its constant name. The moment we give it a name, it's not representing every name it possibly has.、Uh, it has more than 999 names. It has whatever many names we can come up with. It is the moment we give it a name, we're talking about one aspect of it and not all of it or its constancy. The unnameable is from which heaven and earth originated. That which we have no way to even put a name on it, you know, we can give the Tao a name. The Tao is great. The Tao is vast. The Tao is that feeling. All of these things we can give a name to. That's not the unnameable. The unnameable is what the heck happened before the universe existed? What was there before the Big Bang? Nobody knows. What was that? That's the Wu Ming, the non unnameable. The nameable is the mother of the ten thousand things. When we can say, ah, the Big Bang, 
Ah, uh, what was it in the news a while ago? The God particle. Ah, the this, ah, the that. Ah, what are the core elements that make up all that? All of us have hydrogen, or whatever it may be that's going on in science that you can say, here's a name, here's something that which all of our origins, our DNA, our planet, our rocks, our whatever comes from. That's the nameable. And we want to have this naming and unnaming, this idea of being in touch with the fact that there's something that's so big that we can't fathom it. And yet, we want to be constantly challenging ourselves to explore it. And that's why it is so important, and so often we're going to be talking about this all through our time together, and if you've spent any time with me before, we've talked about it before. Chang gu chang wu yu yi guan xi miao. That idea of using non-desire, or that nice, porous breathing, that pre-heaven breathing, to really check into that fabric, to say, wow, wow, there really is a hum, there is something going on, I do feel a tingle, uh, my body does change, there is a certain something that's happening. And I can't see it, and if I turn to look at it quickly, it disappears. But if I just don't look too much, I use non-desire, I just, ah. Oh. It feels, it is pretty darn great, for lack of a better word. And then, I have to use my yu, or my desire. I, mean, I want to get to know the Tao better, I want to follow the path, I want to clean my tuning fork. So then I have to use my desire. How am I going to clean the tuning fork? Okay, I'm going to do better breathing. I'm going to focus on my organs. I'm going to enliven my joints. I'm going to create better circulation. I'm going to do pre-heaven, post-heaven breathing. Uh, do martial arts, do meditation, do whatever it is, Buddhist chanting. All of those things to really use it. How do I study this? What am I going to read? I come to the seminar. That's using desire to explore the Tao. And this balance of saying, okay, I'm going to work really hard to get it, and then at the same time, just step back from it and let it just happen all at once. And if I can do one and then the other, and then every once in a while, you know, it's like when you're first learning to ride a bicycle and you got the training wheels or you're pushing and then all of a sudden there's that moment where there's the whoa, and off you go. There's that moment where you're able to use your desire and be doing this, okay, I'm paying attention to this, and at the same time, you're like, whoa, I'm experiencing the big thing as well, all at once. Knowing that you got neither one right, <laughs> But at least you had that moment, that feeling of whoa. Uh, and those moments are what's precious. Uh, to me, I guess, I should say, right? Uh, and so that's what we're talking about. When these two things it talks about, they spring from the same source. It's basically saying, as breathing, there's the breathing in, there's the breathing out, there's post-heaven breathing, you breathe down to your dantian, you breathe up to your upper dantian, you breathe up to your dantian, everything can be reversed that obviously there's something even greater that exists, and we're giving it no name and name. Both of these have the same origin, whatever that may be, the Tao. Because the Wu Ming, the non-name, isn't the Tao, right? The fact that we said non-name is still a name. We haven't actually touched the constancy of it yet, right? And so this non-naming, this experiencing of something, and this naming, okay, I have to do this, and if I do this, I get a more experience, I get less experience, I do all these things. All of this, it comes from that same origin, though we gave it different names. We gave it different names to make it easier for us to grasp, to, to acknowledge, to feel. They aren't two different things. They are the same thing, just for us to, to get around it. We've done that. And thus, they are equally shen, mysterious, profound. It's a wonderful word in Chinese that's just good. If you look it up in the dictionary, it's like, it means dark, hard to see through, uh, profound, mysterious, all of these things, just wow. It's a wow word. Uh, and then, I love that final line. Xuan zhi you xue, right? Profound, I translated it here for you at first as deeply profound and unfathomable. But that's not what it really says. What it really is saying is, Profound, if you go to the most profound spot within profound, that has a whole profound to it. So it's profoundly profound. It's profound is profound. It's like if you stand between two mirrors and it just goes vroom, every reflection you see has a whole profound to it. It's just continually profound. 
And every time you go into the profound, you're like, oh, it's even more profound. Right? And then, 重要之门, it is the doorway to a great many wonders. I mean, I, you know, I have no idea when the first translation of this came into English and who was reading it. But that certainly sounds like Alice in Wonderland right there. I mean, it's just like, whoa, down the rabbit hole, and look what happens. Uh, and that's what he's saying here. He's saying, you know, you touch this, you go through this, and you suddenly go, whoa, the Tao, all of a sudden it's just like, wow. I have a feeling that my wife is going to give me a hard time because I'm going to keep saying, wow. She's going to be like, wow. You say it again. There it is again. There it is again. But this is meow. It is wow. Right? What does Wong have to say? That's your Wong. Uh, so, when Professor Wong was talking about it, uh, what he was constantly trying to say is that there's the idea that there's the eternal Tao, or what I call the constant. That idea that there's just this thing that's constant, that is eternal. Uh, and our job is to realize that we have no way to grasp it, and yet we must constantly strive to live consciously aware of it. Now, the very best, what is the best? The very best is to be clean of a tuning fork and yet completely unaware of its existence. And so if we can realize that by the very nature of us wanting to pursue the Tao, well, I'm already, at the best, going to get second place. Right? That first place, if there was such a thing, goes to the person who's completely oblivious to all this and yet completely represents everything it says. That, that is first place. That's the gold medal. Uh, and yet, if you desire the medal, you've lost the whole thing. So, uh, what Wong was really trying to say about this is that there's this idea of this constancy and of needing to strive for and yet let it happen all at once. And to know that we have no way of even coming close to grasping it. And yet that is our path that we're about to embark on. And that's why it's chapter one leading us to every other chapter. And what's great about it is that he says something that I really like is I translate it as the doorway to a great many wonders. What Wong makes mention of is that from here, everything you do is wondrous. That if you grasp this, everything becomes wondrous or profound. As opposed to, I come to the door and then, oh, there's something profound I got from this door. There's something profound. It's like, no, no, no. When you touch this, suddenly everything is wonderful. And if you've never met Professor Wong, you watch the video, you see he's got this, he's this smile, and they just, you go, oh, that's somebody who's just, everything is wondrous to him. That childlike just, whoop. And so, chapter one, that is what we're focusing on, is that, one, there's this constancy. And so, when, the moment we start talking about it, it's not it. There's just something that's bigger than it, the naming of it. This idea of what came before, what is unnameable, nameable, all of this, those are still names. They all come from this thing that we're calling the Tao. And then we say the wondrousness of it. And then we realize that it's not just you see everything is profound, but suddenly everything takes on its place within this whole thing. Wonderful, wonderful first chapter.